So starting off with highlighting, this is a new feature. When I mouse over the plot, the point that I'm closest to, or once I'm close to a point, I should say, I'm going to get a little dot indicating where, what point I'm looking at and what the coordinates of that position are. You can change and customize what the appearance of the highlighting is. So we have X slice and rather than look at one curve at a time, it's going to look at all of them. And so when I move over, I now get a vertical line going through all the plots uh, with a point for each plot and a label for each plot. This is on by default and it applies to most of the plot functions that generate curves or points. Additionally, we have the ability to do static highlighting. And so in this case, we're using our same X slice highlighting effect, but we're saying that we want this to happen at X equals seven. You get that effect as a permanent thing. Next up, we are gonna look at some things in high dimensional visualization. And so this is a V14 feature introducing a family of pairwise visualization plots for dealing with data that has lots of dimensions. So here we have a small data set and, and I'm showing a subset of the table here. And, and so the pairwise plots, I mean, in general, this visualization type has been around for a long time. So each of these plots is one column against another column. And so you do that for every combination. And, and, and so this is new feature in version 14. It's experimental. Similarly, we have some other functions. We have pairwise density histogram and pairwise smooth density histogram, which take the same, you know, which basically take these points and feed them into density histogram and smooth density histogram. We also have pairwise quantile plot and pairwise um, probability plot. Difference is that each of these points no longer represents a single row. So it could be that for a given point that the X value is coming from one row and the Y value is coming from another row. So now we'll look at ternary plots. These are a way of visualizing data that makes up a whole. Uh, so if you have three components that are mixed together in some proportion, um, then we can use the fact that everything is adding up to a whole, adding up to some constant um, to go from three dimensions down to two dimensions by e effectively solving, uh, using this equation, you know, using X plus Y, X plus V plus W equals one to eliminate one of these variables. If you turn on the grid lines, which are on in this plot, but it's very faint, then the grid lines are also um, forming triangles. The tick marks are rotated to help you identify which direction to go. So we'll get into scaling expansions now. Um, so over the past few versions, there's been a big push to enable scaling functions everywhere almost that we possibly can. So here we have you know, sort of a regular stream plot. And if you want to or have an application where you need an X, you know, a log scaled X axis and a reversed Y axis, put that in and out it comes. We've also extended what types of scales you can have for scaling functions. And so now we also have date scale as an object, not date object, uh, date scale as, as an object that, um, allows you to say, this is, I want to use a date scale. And additionally, it has the ability to allow you to specify or control how your data gets interpreted. Then we also introduced nominal scale and ordinal scale for dealing with categorical um, scales. And so nominal scale is things where it's just a collection of objects. Um, ordinal scales are similar to the nominal scales but there's an order to them. So there is a least element, there is a most element, and for any two elements, A and B, you can determine that A is less than B or B is less than A. I wanna finish up uh, talking about some styling changes and additions. So we've updated the default gradient for density plot, contour plot, a bunch of related functions. And so these are 
Um, you know, they previously were sort of a dusty blue to a tannish, and we've gone to something that has a darker dark and a brighter um, light. You have a wider range of dark to light, so you have more chance for detecting features in the middle there. We also have various shader effects that can be used as uh, directives in graphics. And so we have blurring, which takes your um, content, which in this case is the text Wolfram and a thick circle, and just draws it in a blurred way uh, with a given blurring radius. We have drop shadowing, which basically takes that blurring and uses it as an offset backdrop behind the object. And then finally, we have haloing. This, in its simplest form, is putting a border around the outside of things. And there's a lot of flexibility here. You can have the border on the outside. You can have the border on the inside. Putting the border on the inside can be a cool effect sometimes. Um, and you, have a, you can have a sharp border and then a fading border uh, that blurs out. 